The Kimber Pro Carry 2. Let's check it out. The Cole 1911 was designed in 1911 and it served the U.S. military until 1985. I mean, it's a proven design. A lot of that has to do with the caliber. It has a lot of knockdown power, uh, even though it's limited to seven rounds during military times, but uh, you can get the eight round magazines as well. I cut my teeth on the 1911. It was really the gun that I put a lot of rounds through uh, doing IPSIG matches, IDPA, and other competitions. I mean, I really like the 1911. It's very thin, very pointable, easy to shoot. Today we're going to take a look at the Kimber Pro Carry 2. Now this is a shortened version of the 1911. There's a lot of different upgrades on these handguns, which there's a lot of different companies that make 1911s. And some of these have become synonymous with just the design, including the high ride beaver tail, you know, the extended uh, safeties and different things. Uh, this is an aluminum frame, which makes it really light. It is in 45 ACP, has a four inch barrel, uh, but it is very pointable to shoot. Now, while you have those old steel frame 1911s that are heavy, this is a great little carry option. And we really appreciate Kimber for sending this Pro Carry 2, and we're gonna add this to our collection because there's nothing like having a 1911 on your hip. Kimber's known for really high quality 1911s, uh, but they started out in 1979 uh, in Oregon. Uh, Jack Warren, who was an Australian, moved to the U.S. and started building really nice 22 rifles. Uh, in the mid-90s, after some acquisitions, they began to build 1911s, really high quality 1911s. Uh, some of your older Kimbers are really sought after because they're just really fine quality. The finish is excellent. A few years ago, uh, Kimber did go through some quality control issues, but they are back and they are putting out some really nice 1911s again. And this is the Pro Carry model. Uh, there's some cool features about this that are different than a lot of the Colt variations. But let's go ahead and make sure the gun's unloaded. We're going to drop our seven round magazine, check the chamber. It's empty. Now with the seven round magazine, a lot of guns have gone to the eight round magazine for your 1911. And these are fairly easy to come by, so that's not a really big deal. Uh, it does have an aluminum frame, which makes it much more lightweight than your steel frame models and has a nice silver type finish on it. Uh, it has a carbon steel slide and a stainless steel barrel. Uh, and there are some features to this gun that separate it from a lot, of, especially the traditional Colt models, uh, like the Colt Government. Uh, right here we have one, it's a five inch barrel. We're gonna be looking at some comparisons because this is just a plain Jane and it'll give you some ideas of what goes into these Kimber pistols. Uh, then we have the Commander model, which has a four and a quarter inch barrel. And then we have the officer's model which is a three and a half inch barrel this is a four inch barrel so it kind of goes into the in-between has really nice wide slide serrations really easy to grab uh, the commander hammer or delta hammer uh, it makes it nice to fit into this beaver tail which you can see that it kind of sticks out it gives you a lot of room to press that grip safety beautiful rosewood grips checkering on the front and then smooth finish on the back and it's mirrored on the other side uh, it does have an extended frame safety and has serrations. Uh, your slide stop is checkered at the top. Then we have a little bit of an extended magazine release. And the magazines jettison. <laughs> Even in the up position, they pop up. And so it's going to be really easy to just kind of loosen those mags. It has a competition trigger, which is skeletonized. 
very smooth trigger pull. We'll check that out in a minute. But the high ride beaver tail is really nice. Um, and most of your nicer 1911s that have any kind of custom work or any kind of upgrades typically have this high ride beaver tail. It just really mitigates the recoil, gets your hand way up on the pistol. Uh, it has a very low bore axis anyway. And it's a very thin handgun. That's one of the reasons why I love 1911. They do suffer in round capacity. Again, seven, eight rounds. Uh, but they're just really pointable and easy to shoot. The sights are kind of a Novak style. Uh, they are dovetailed in. We have two dot on the back with serrations. And then we have a dovetailed front sight. So that's going to be really easy to change out your sights if you want to. The barrel is stainless steel. It's four inches. And it's a bull barrel. The barrel comes out and it fits to the slide. And we have a full length guide rod as well. And there's no barrel bushing system, which a lot of the original Colt 1911s had. And the barrel does have a crown to protect your accuracy. But guys, it is a very solid lockup. I mean, it is just locked in there. And then here at the back, very little movement. Uh, on the front, there's no movement. So this is going to lend to really good accuracy, really frame to slide fit. We have a flat mainspring housing. It is polymer. Of course, the screws have the Torx head. So, uh, you know, that I really like that better than the straight type blade screwdriver uh, that the originals came with. Here we have a basic trigger on the government model. There's no adjustment to it. The combat sights. Uh, this one is actually pinned and staked. And you have a dovetail rear. Not a great sight picture. In fact, I've actually used this pistol in IPSIG matches before and it really makes a difference to have those higher, more profile sights. The safety is the traditional safety with serrations and your slide stop has serrations. And we have a tanged hammer, which is straight back. Those can have a little bit of hammer bite if you're not careful, especially if you have large hands, with this small little grip safety. And you have that little nub on the end and you know they work great but you know when you're really shooting the beaver tail really makes a huge difference uh, also on this one we just have a packmire uh, mainspring housing and it is a little bit arched and of course we have just a smooth front strap which is traditional for your 1911s and very thin serrations but the bluing on this is absolutely beautiful this is a series 70 i've had it for a number of years man this is just a great gun to shoot but when you take out one of these this had the upgrades, uh, you know, it just is a whole different experience, especially that beaver tail. That really makes a huge difference with these pistols. And to be honest, you can get a lot of different features, ambidextrous safeties and other things, uh, front slide serrations. You can even get rails on these now, but I really like this kind of minimal type look and yet you're getting those great upgrades. Uh, also, it does have that smooth front strap. You can get models that have the aggressive texturing on the front. Uh, but, you know, it really just shoots very well. And of course, that just goes up in price the more features you have. Now, to give you an idea of some of the extra features you can get, I brought out the Pro Raptor 2. And this is one of Kimber's more upgraded 1911 versions. While the Pro Carry is more toward the basic model, uh, this has a lot of features that, you know, just are more custom. Uh, first off, you notice we have straight serrations here on the slide, just kind of traditional, but yet a lot wider. I like them wider than the standard Colt. Um, they're too close together. Uh, here we have the Raptor serrations, very different, uh, you know, almost like scales. Uh, they bite into your hand, it's just a little easier to grab hold. Uh, and then we have the grips, which again have that Raptor kind of feel to it. And we have the Raptor serrations here on the front. And then on the back, we have the 25 lines per square inch on this aluminum housing. With the Pro Carry 2, we have a slick front, and then we have those, those 25 lines per square inch on the housing as well. Ambidextrous controls on the Pro Raptor. Uh, with the Pro Carry 2, uh, we just have an extended frame safety. Commander hammers, your beaver tail's about the same. Uh, of course, different grips on the Pro Carry 2. Uh, but one of the big differences between these two is this is an all steel frame firearm. Uh, the frame itself is stainless steel, whereas we have an aluminum alloy frame here. But that's one of the reasons why this is named carry, <laughs> because this is so much easier to carry. The weight is considerably different. Sights are a little different. We have tritium on the Pro Raptor 2. Uh, with the standard Pro Carry, we have just regular three dot sights. And the dimensions are a little bit different on the rear. Uh, the front's very similar. 
and they both have full-length guide rods with bull barrels. There is going to be some more hand fitting in the Pro Raptor 2, and this did come out of the Kimber Custom Shop. Uh, while the Pro Carry 2 is your standard line series, but it reflects in the price. The magazine well has been nicely beveled, allows for those magazines to really go in easily. And uh, that's really a lot when you're talking about competitive shooting. And then also you have a place here where it's drilled and tapped. You can put in a little base plate. And we have Kimber nicely engraved on the side of the slide. And then here on the other side, Pro Carry 2. Guys, I'm a huge fan of that blued finish, especially on the 1911. I mean, it's just beautiful polish. And then we have a brushed finish on the top to keep glare down. And also right here, it's your shroud. And then the aluminum frame very well finished. I mean, this is just a beautiful gun. Now this is a single action pistol and we're going to drop the magazine. Let's go ahead and check the chamber just for kicks. Uh, what happens when you first load in your magazine and you rack the slide? The hammer comes into the rear position uh, and then you can put, engage your safety or you know you can go ahead and start firing. Uh, and then every pull of the trigger is going to just fire the round. Now, one of the things about it, the trigger does not actuate the hammer. It just trips the sear. So to actually fire this, you've got to rack it, keep this in the rear position, and then we go with what we call cocked and locked. And that's one in the chamber, and then you have your magazine, and you keep the safety on. When you get ready to deploy it, just take, drop your safety, fire all seven rounds, and then you have a reload. With double action pistols, you're able to just pull your trigger and it will actuate the hammer. But one of the things about the 1911 is that they have the best trigger pulls out there on the market. And this little Kimber Pro Carry 2 has an exceptional trigger. Now the trigger pull, just a little bit of take up, not much at all. And then we have a nice clean break. I mean super clean. Reset right there. <laughs> I mean, it is so fast, you barely let off the trigger. And checking the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge and brown nails, you have to depress that grip safety. Four pounds, 11.2 ounces. Four pounds, 8.4 ounces. One of the reasons why the 1911 has such a good trigger pull is it's just a straight pullback. It goes straight into the receiver just like this. And so it makes it really crisp. Uh, of course, obviously, with some of your other 1911s, this one is tuned, so it makes it really crisp. And it is factory tuned. But even if you get a standard government model, the trigger pulls are better than any of your striker fire pistols and definitely your double single action. Now, 1911 is very safe to carry. Uh, and one of the reasons is this little guy right here. This is your grip safety, and it will not fire unless you have a full grip and depress that grip safety. And that's something that the U.S. military incorporated in 1911 when they adopted the 1911. But I'll show you when you pull that hammer back, without depressing that safety, it is locked on. And until you depress that grip safety, it's not going to fire. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people feel comfortable carrying these cocked and locked. Really, 1911s are some of the safest guns to carry. Kimber Pro Carry 2, 1 pound, 13.6 ounces. Weight on the Colt 1911 government model, 2 pounds, 6 ounces. That steel frame makes a big difference. We really appreciate Fioki for sponsoring the ammo, all made in the USA. One of the largest suppliers of ammunition in the country. Guys, this ammunition has done very well for us. Also, little loaders uh, for making these magazines easy. One of the great things is this fits your double stack magazines, but it'll also fit your 1911 mags. Now, taking the Pro Carry 2 down to the range, it's definitely lighter. Uh, you know, with that aluminum frame, it doesn't quite have that heavy feel that your standard 1911 has, all steel frame. Uh, with that, you're going to have just a little more recoil, you have a little shorter barrel, but it's very manageable to shoot. Uh, and it's one of the things about the 1911, it's so thin, it's so very pointable. I mean, it just tracks well. And one of the reasons why I've loved 1911 for so long. Uh, really, one of the biggest downsides, it's a single stack magazine with seven or eight rounds compared to a lot of the polymer frame striker fire pistols that can carry 15, 17 plus rounds. But definitely in 45 ACP, 
you know that you have an effective round that you're carrying on your hip. Plus, all the tradition in the U.S. military, uh, how this has been an excellent self-defense option. The three-dot sights, they're easy to pick up. You know, they kind of raise up a little bit. But one of the things about a 1911, it's just so pointable. And again, I learned really to shoot with a 1911. And I always love getting one out to the range. Uh, typically though, they're pretty heavy. So carrying one that is really lightened down, like this one, gives you a lot of confidence, but the weight's not there. It's just a lot lighter to carry. And two, that beautiful finish. I mean, you've got the two-tone effect. Uh, you can get this in straight black or you can get it in a stainless color and so there are other options and we didn't have any kind of malfunctions at the range we were using good quality fiocchi a 230 grain ball and it just shot really well and the one thing about 45 is they say they all fall to ball and it still makes a great self-defense caliber but one additional thing that i love about the 1911 other than just how thin it is and how pointable is the trigger it's hard to beat a 1911 trigger. Single action, has a little bit of take up, it has that really crisp break, and Kimber really does it right with their triggers. And when it comes to disassembly, especially with that full-length guide rod, it's a little different than your standard 1911. Go ahead and bring back your slide, engage your slide stop. Right here in your guide rod, there's a small little hole. And you'll need to take a small little paper clip, drop down in there, just bend it. And it fits just like this. Now release your slide stop, and we're going to go forward just about three-quarters of an inch to that little notch right there in your slide. And you're going to want to push out your takedown lever. And you gotta find the right spot. There it goes. You push it out from the other side and then just pull it straight out. And then you can take your slide and it can go all the way off the frame. Now here, we're gonna take out our recoil spring and guide rod. It is captive and um, it's a really nice guide rod. And then we have our barrel. And you pull your barrel out the front, dropping down your barrel link. That bull barrel, man, it is so crazy. But this is what fits up next to your slide. You can see the locking lugs right there. Nice polished feed ramp. The interior of the slide is beautiful. Uh, now we've shot this quite a bit and it's pretty dirty, but no tooling marks. I mean, Kimber does a great job of finishing their firearms. And same thing here, very dirty, but very well done. And that's all you need to do to field strip for reassembly. We're going to drop our barrel link, put it back through the slide, bring back up your barrel link, put in your recoil spring, making sure that these little ears fit against your barrel. It's kind of a natural fit. Then bring that barrel link out just a little bit. Uh, the barrel link is what your slide stop is going to go through to capture it. We bring it over the frame. Now look through this little hole and find your barrel length. And your barrel should be all the way back to the rear position. Drop in your takedown lever. And I just set it right here. Now we're gonna bring our slide back. We want that little notch right there to fit right over that little cavity. Now bring your takedown lever up and get it up close. You don't wanna scratch your frame and just push. There it goes. And once it locks into place, you don't wanna put a scratch on your frame we call that the idiot scratch and so you'll see a lot of 1911s with that scratch and then we're going to bring it back into slide lock now let's remove that little pin and then drop your slide stop and you're ready to go if for some reason this barrel goes forward uh, and you can't get this in you've missed that little barrel link while it is a little more complicated than a lot of your polymer striker fire pistols to disassemble uh, once you get used to it it's not that bad now the Pro Carry 2 comes in two-tone, it also comes in a stainless steel, and it also comes in blue. So you have a number of choices, and also you can get the two-tone with the full-size length, or you can get the Ultra Pro Carry 2, and it has the shorter, more like the officer's model. Now Kimber does have a line of holsters that they do offer uh, with the Kimber logo, uh, but these are actually Galco holsters. But this is an excellent holster to be able to carry, very minimal in that four o'clock position. And, uh, 
just fits really nicely. Of course, obviously you want to break that in and one of the big ways I do it is put a plastic bag over my firearm, stick it in here overnight. Uh, you can treat the inside, but man, these holsters really fit this gun uh, because they are beautiful. You have a tensioning screw right here. Uh, we have it double stitched in all the real serious wear parts. And then we have this reinforced leather to keep this open so you can draw it and you can reholster it really easily. And what would a Kimber 1911 be without a great quality holster? Now Kimber's used by a number of law enforcement agencies here in the U.S. and also the U.S. Marine Corps Special Operations Command uh, chose Kimber firearms for their 1911s. So that speaks a lot about the quality of Kimber. Now the manufacturer suggested retail of the Kimber Pro Carry 2 is $951 uh, and it does come again with quite a bit of uh, accessories and upgrades to this pistol but Kimber again does a lot of more custom type firearms but for the fit and finish you're getting with the Pro Carry 2 I mean this to me just checks off the boxes. Pros and cons of the Pro Carry 2. Uh, pros beautifully finished firearm. Beautiful rosewood grips. The trigger pull is phenomenal. I mean, I love that trigger pull. Uh, really nice beaver tail. Uh, some beaver tails come with a little memory notch right here. I like that. It gives me a little more to grip, but um, this is very serviceable, much better than the tank. Love the wide serrations. I love the bluing and just the finish on the frame. The bevel on the magazine, the crown on the barrel, and then with the bull barrel, the fit tight fit of this gun is just really nice. I mean, it's just lends itself to good accuracy. As far as cons, uh, I would like to see some serrations on the front, but that is an upgrade. But I really like to have something on the front, some texturing on the front. Uh, and then also the mainspring housing being just polymer. It'd be nice to have an aluminum mainspring housing back here uh, just to give it just a little more class. <laughs> but overall, this is a very beautiful firearm and definitely what many would consider a barbecue gun. So guys, if you're looking for a good quality 1911, something that you know you can use as a bedside gun, something that you can conceal carry, uh, check out the Kimber Pro Carry 2. It's just an excellent choice. The great thing is it doesn't break the bank and yet you still have a lot of quality and you know the finish on Kimber firearms is just excellent. You'll be tempted to have this as a barbecue gun, but for me, I think it's an excellent EDC everyday carry. And again, we appreciate Kimber for sending the Pro Carry 2 for this review and guys adding it to my 1911 collection. I'm gonna tell you, if you don't have a 1911, there's nothing like it. I mean, it's just pointable, great crisp trigger, and there's just something about this design knowing that it served the U.S. military from 1911 to 1985, and it was a very effective caliber. Rubber Dummies is one of the best training tools on the market, and you get a 10% discount using Suit00 when you click the link down in the description. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Beautiful to be able to depress that trigger, depress that trigger, depress that grip safety, your takedown lever, and you're going to want to push it from the other side. Sometimes it's a little bit uh, just real tricky. Isn't it? And then we have a carbon slide. Then we have a carbon steel slide on top. Man, just blah blah blah. Honestly, just very rudimentary. Okay, rudimentary. What's a rudimentary? <laughs>